very good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Buddhist Mahavihara's BMW Dhammadana series. And this Friday, we have with us Bhante Professor Lenagala Srinivasa. And uh, Bhante will be talking about the layman's guide to respecting Buddhist monks. This topic we thought about would be useful for us, especially now that this is the Vasana season, right? It's three months of Vasana, which the monks normally observe uh, in monasteries. And it'll be useful for us as lay people to how we interact with Buddhist monks, you know, when we come to the temple and vice versa, how they will react to us and how we should pay respects to them, etc. So Bhante will be talking about those subjects uh, or those matters this evening. Bhante Professor Lenagala Srinivasa uh, was the former Dean of the Faculty of Language Studies at the Buddhist and Pali University of Sri Lanka. He's currently the Professor of Sanskrit at the same university. Uh, he obtained his BA first class from the University of Kalania in Sri Lanka. He then obtained his uh, first master's degree, a first class uh, degree from the University of Delhi, and then completed his PhD at the Banaras Hindu University in Varanasi, India. He was awarded an Indian Council for Cultural Relations, ICCRC scholarship, and also an Indo Lanka scholarship for his postgraduate studies. Um, Bhante's research, or keen research, is on Buddhist Sanskrit and Vedic Sanskrit. Bhante has also authored many books in Singhala, and currently there's a book in publication, an English book, which will be published by the Buddhist Mahavihara soon. Uh, he has a deep interest in Samatha and Vipassana meditation, and he has experience to guide practitioners to reach uh, higher spiritual goals, and he's the founder of the uh, Satimat Viveka Senasuna, Center for Mindfulness and Relaxation at Ruvanvela, Sri Lanka. Uh, in this respect, Bhante will be organizing a two-day meditation retreat on the 17th and 18th of this month. It's a Saturday, Sunday. Uh, it's going to be a stay-in meditation retreat. So if you'd like to follow Bhante's uh, advice and teaching on meditation, uh, please do follow us on Sati. Yeah? It'll be on mindfulness for daily living. Okay? So without much ado, let me uh, invite Bhante to start this evening's Dhamma sharing. Bhante? Dear Dhamma friends, thank you for inviting me for Dhamma talks. In next few days, you are going to have more Dhamma talks. Already we have given two Dhamma talks. Today we are talking about the layman's guide to respecting Buddhist monks. Very useful topic for all the lay people. First of all, I would like to thank you, Brother Leslie and committee, uh, for inviting me to do this Dhamma talks. Today, we are going to discuss about the uh, respect of monks, how to respect to the monks as lay person. It is very useful for all the Buddhist people. There are few things in the world uh, to be careful when we associate. One is fire. Though it is little or big, it is dangerous. Fire. There's another thing, king. Though he is a prince or princess or king uh, in little age, a small age, must be careful because he has got power. One day he will punish us. And another thing is mad person. We have to be careful when we associate. We don't know what he does. He will kill us. He will attack us. Sometimes we don't know he is going to do it. Mad person, very dangerous. 
the other one is monk though he is little monk or uh, old monk we have to be careful why if we do wrong things to him it is sinful activity it may be a sinful activity the bad results will come to us this is an uh, old expression we have to think again and again about that normally lay people don't care the little monks only chief monks are <laughs> expecting everywhere for the funerals <laughs> for the alms givings uh, for other functions or they expect chief monk everywhere in sri lanka also same uh, when i am uh, as uh, living there as a little monk we see uh, the lay people come and go worship to the chief monk then uh, go back home they don't care about us uh, we are crying no one uh, does, uh, doesn't give love to us they don't care us they don't approach to us we were sorrowful some lay people were there they come while uh, they are coming they bring some toffee chocolate and some things which are good for the little monks they are little we have to consider them they are little but they come higher and higher positions after few years they become the chief uh, when the time being so we have to respect to the little monks also we have to pay respect we have to bow down we have to worship them with the folded arms uh, we have to speak with them peacefully and uh, we have to care all the monks they are uh, higher than us by spirituality they have uh, entered to the path to the liberation they have sacrificed their life for the buddha sasana they have dedicated their life for the buddha sasana to protect this great philosophy they are not arahants some people think all monks are arahants eh? they should uh, behave like arahants but they are normal people they have entered to this buddhist order to protect this uh, great doctrine they learn they practice as much as possible they teach whatever they learn so they are working for this buddha, buddha sasana they are doing very great service you can't do it sometimes you ordain for few days uh novici novicated programs you become monks but you can't stay alone time you have to go back home the monks are staying whole life they are also having feelings they are human beings they feel hungry they feel thirsty so they have controlled them it is not easy task they have feelings to go to uh, see some beautiful things they uh, have feelings uh, to go to cinema halls parks musical shows and they uh, they have to they have some feelings enjoy similar to the the other persons in this society but they have well control their feelings that is why they are spiritually very high than lay persons they are doing a, a difficult work here uh, first verse i have taken from mangala sutta kanti cha sovacha sata 
සමනානංච දස්සනං කාලීන ධම්ම සාකච්ඡා ඒතම් මංගල මුත්තමං second line is very important for us samanaanancha dassanam see in the monks is a highest blessing patient and obedience see in the monks timely discussion of the dhamma this is the highest blessing the meaning of this verse it is from mangala sutta samanaanancha dassanam if we see the monks it is so attractive uh, to our eyes as buddhist we must have uh, such kind of thought seen monks is very blessing blissful thing therefore lots of people are coming to the temples to see monks when the monks are going around Uh, for the arms in the arms round they are so happy when the monks come to the arms hall people are so happy they are, are respecting to them with the folded arms worshiping when they come to the homes they are so happy they are so happy they think it as a blessing act when we go to the houses when we uh, go to see the patients they are so happy seeing the monks they get a big pleasure they think oh a buddhist monk is coming today there are many monks if you see many monks in buddhist mahavihara you are so happy you know if there are no monks not happy so uh, at the time of alms giving if there are many monks you are so happy don't you don't think oh there are a big amount of monks how can i feed them it is difficult to feed in uh, sometimes after a few months here may be many monks in the vassa uh, chivara or katina chivara ceremony many monks come to this place from sri lanka do you think it is a disturbant disturbance no it is not a disturbance for you because we as buddhists we like to see many monks in the period of buddha there were thousands of monk they were moving uh, in a line sometimes 20000 monks from rajagaha nuvar rajgir to vaisali uh, there was a journey to remove the obstacles which was happen in vaisali 20000 monks went with the buddha in a line so attractive no so even 10 monks are moving together we can see the attractiveness so when you see monks it is a blessing thing samanaanancha dassanam etam mangalam uttamam the monks buddhist monks are practi- practitioners of buddhism who have taken vows to live a life of simplicity celibacy and dedication to the teachings of buddha a monk radiates loving kindness metta vihari yo bhikkhu pasanno buddha sasane adhigacche padam santam sankha roop samam sukham the monk who abides in loving kindness who is pleased with the buddha's teaching attains to that state of peace and happiness the stilling of conditioned things monks are always with the compassion they are working for the lay people we are always ready to do our service towards buddhist society 24 hours we are ready without expecting any gainings we don't work for the money 
we are ready to do service for the propagation of the Buddhism. You know, when I was in Sri Lanka, I was so busy. Every day, funerals, alms givings, paritha chantings, and, and any other various kinds of services. So busy. Morning to evening. Sometimes whole night chantings, day by day. No sleeping. Daily. <laughs> in our uh, country, paritha chanting, whole night chanting is very common thing. So only two, three monks are there in the temple. Sometimes only one monk in the big region, he has to go. The nearby temples also, they are inviting to the monk, come, please join with us. No monks to chant, please come. Then we are always busy. Sometimes seven days chanting, whole night pirin, parit chanting, seven days. Very difficult. In this way, monks are working with full of compassion. We don't get angry. People are coming for Bodhi Puja. We do Bodhi Puja under the Bodhi tree. Give blessings to the patients. Give blessings to the people who are living in our area. They come and invite us. Bhante, I am having a big problem. Please bless me. There is a patient in my family. Please bless us. Please bless him. Even one person invite me. There are no many persons. I am also doing it. I can't avoid it. I am professor. Why I do these things? So, I no, uh, no need to do those things because I have uh, income. I can live with that, but I don't do such kind of things. Just I do the puja. I give blessings. We give blessings one hour, one and a half hour, not uh, limited to uh, short time. We do it at our best. We give, we give the powerful blessing to those patients and family members. It's our duty. We are no, not lazy people. We work hard. It's not a, an easy task. With loving kindness, we do. Metta vihari yobi kupasanno buddha sasane. A monk who is full of metta or loving kindness and who has got attraction of the Buddhist order. Pasanno Buddha Sasane. Buddha Sasane. Pasanno. I am so attracted to the Buddhism. When I read the Buddhism, more and more attraction come to me. I can see the Buddha while reading the suttas and these great doctrines. I can see the Buddha. You also can see the Buddha reading and listening the Dhamma talks. Adigache padan santam, then he can reach to the final liberation. Sankha rupa samam sukham, eliminating all the attachments which are connected to our life. Sankhara Upasama, eliminating all these Sankhara so, uh, formations, he can reach to the final goal. In Dhammapada, there is a very famous verse Yohave Daharo Bhikkhu Yunjati Buddha Sasane so imang lokang pabhaseti abha mutto vachandima. The monk who, while still young, devotees, devotes himself to the Buddha's teaching, illumines 
this world like the moon freed from a cloud yo have daharo bikku if there is a young a monk yunjati buddha sasane who are practicing the buddha dhamma buddhist order so imang lokam pabhaseti he lights up this world with that that dhamma abhamuttu chandima as the moon freed from the cloud uh, there are some young monks in the world they are working hard they are uh, giving dhamma talks they train the people to meditate meditation activities so they are similar to the stars they are similar to the moon they make this world light that is i buddha appreciated those kinds of monks by this verse yo have daharo bikku daharo means little daharo bikku means monk little monks daharo bikku uh, buddha knew they will do big service into this society they have such kind of energy to do dhamma pada verse 362 another good verse uh, it is explaining who is the monk hatha sangyato pada sangyato vacha sangyato sangyatuttamo ajhatrato samahito eko santosito tamaho bikkhum he who controls his hand controls his foot controls his speech and has complete control of himself who finds delight in sight development practice and is calm who stays alone and is contented him they call a bhikkhu he is very peaceful one he has controlled his arms he has controlled his legs and also he has controlled his speech he use peaceful words we never blame to the people we never get angry always we are full of compassion when we speak with us when someone is speak with us they are so happy we are speaking peacefully in a calm manner nothing is they are to get angry there are different characters in this society we have to be careful if we get angry because of other persons we go down our spirituality will will lose therefore we have to control our anger so the monks are always practicing it sometimes people are blaming criticizing charging we don't care them we go on our way peacefully even buddha faced to such kind of situations some people came and blamed to the buddha criticized the buddha he didn't get angry he stayed peacefully that is the way of living according to the buddhism so here the dhamma pada convey the significance of respecting monks and the monastic community by highlighting the merit of offering alms the importance of revering those who have renounced worldly life and the spiritual benefits that come from supporting the sangha by practicing generosity offering respect and supporting the monastic community lay people can cultivate virtue and 
create conditions conducive to their own spiritual growth. As Buddhist lay people, they have to protect Mahasangha. They have to support them. Or else this Buddhist order will not go ahead. It will vanish soon. We have to work together, peacefully. Samagga hotama vivadata, Buddha advised to all the Buddhist people, get together, don't argue, don't make debates. Ma vivadata, samagga hotama, live in peace. It is the way of protecting Buddhism. We can take this Buddhism for many years. We can continue with. We should not destroy this Buddhism. Ma antima puriso ahuvatta. Don't be the last Buddhist disciple in this Buddhist order. You don't be the last Buddhist disciple. Buddha said, he said, Buddha said to the monks, you don't be the last monk in this Buddhist order. You have to continue this Buddhist order. Don't destroy this. Don't harm to this Buddhist order. You have to follow my advice. So, we have to work together. You have to uh, pass this great doctrine to your family members to next generation. We have to create new monks for the continuation of this Buddhism, Buddhist order. Or else it will vanish soon. Buddha Sasana remains with the support of monks. If the monks do wrong things, let it be with them. They will get bad results here and here, the, hereafter. Duty of lay people is respect to them thinking on Buddha Sasana. If they blame or criticize them, the bad result will reach to lay people. Hell or heaven are open for both groups, monks and lay people. If they do wrong things, they will get the bad results. Even monks, after the death they will go to the hell. If they do wrong things, Therefore, monks also must be careful. Without doing wrong things, he should practice Buddhism. He should protect Buddhism. And lay people also should practice Buddhism. No need to create sinful thoughts. No need to create sinful results. They will uh, give the results will produce bad and sorrowful events in this birth cycle. The monks have sacrificed, as I earlier mentioned, they have dedicated their lives for the Buddha Sasana. Only lay people can't protect the Buddha Sasana. Sometimes lay people will think, no need monks, we can do it. Huh? Sometimes people are thinking like that, even in Sri Lanka, in some temples, the Dayaka Sabha, they think we can protect Buddha Sasana, no need monks. Then the lay people go uh, do puja, Buddha, Buddha puja, Bodhi puja, they give Dhamma talks, they uh, arrange meditation retreats, and everything they do. How long they can continue it? They have lots of works. As lay people, they have to do jobs, they have to earn money, they have to look after family members, many things. They will do a little period, then they will give up, they will give up it. What happened to the Buddha Sasana? It will vanish. You know, in India, there were more than 44,000 temples built by Emperor Asoka. Emperor Asoka built more than 44,000 temples with pagodas. 
what happened to the India? 12th century, the Mughal invasion came. They killed many monks. Some monks disrobed, can't stay. They, if they are a monk, they kill. Then destroyed all the temples. No monks. Some ruins remain. Even today we can see the ruins which are destroyed by the, uh, by the Mughal invaders. They destroyed all the temples. No monks. Before hundred years, there were no monks in India. All the monks died and dis disrobed. Only remaining so archaeological sites were there when uh, Anagarika Dharmapala went to India. They were not monks. He carried two, three monks to Buddha Gaya. Then established Buddhism again. Now there are many monks. There are many temples. Indian uh, monks are there. Some monks uh, are not having a proper guidance so proper way. Just they wear, take robe and wear it and come to the temples and uh, no observing precepts, uh, seeking some gainings. They are doing it. But some Indian monks are there, they are following the path to the liberation, they are edu ed studying Buddhism. Now it is coming into a good position. So hundred years back, there were no, not monks in India, though there were 84,000 temples, the Buddhism vanished because of lack of the monks. Therefore, we have to think, lay people can't continue this Buddha Sasana alone. There must be monks, or else it will be vanished. There are two groups of monks, Gantha Dura monks and Vipassana Dura monks. I think you haven't heard these two groups. Gantha Dura monks, the monks who follow the studies. Vipassana Dura monks, the monks who follow Vipassana meditation. There is a freedom for monks to follow one of these ways. This is in Dhammapada commentary on verse 1 about Chakkupala story. Ganta Duram, Vipassana Duranti, Jeyeva Durani, Bhikkhuti. Two duties only monk. The duty of study and the duty of contemplation. Katamang Pana Bhante Ganta Duram, Katamang Vipassana Duranti. Reverend Sir, what is meant by the duty of study and what is meant by the duty of contemplation? Here, the duty of study necessitates gaining a knowledge of the word of the Buddha in a manner comfortable to one's understanding. The mastery of one or two Nikayas, or indeed of the whole Tipitaka, bearing it in mind, reciting it, teaching it. In that period, there were no books. All the Dharma, all the Tipitaka uh, kept in the mind. They memorized. They are called bhanakas. No writing, no books. Uh, early period, they were uh, reminded. Uh, they have got. Uh, they had got very good memory. They kept in mind all the doctrines, all the teachings of the Buddha. So Gantadura is that. Uh, Tipitaka study. Vipassana Dura is, on the other hand, the duty of contemplation which leads to arahanship, involves frugal living, satisfaction with the remote lodging, fixing firmly in one's mind the idea of decay and death and the, and the development of spiritual insight by persistent effort. 
meditate in on three characteristics anicca dukkha anatta it is called vipassana uh, chakupala thera was old his eyes were poor he couldn't see actually he was blind then he said venerable sir i can't uh, follow the first uh, section gantha dura i can't read books and uh, no i don't have time to do study uh, works now i need to attain nibbana very soon therefore i would like to follow vipassana dura please guide me then buddha guided him he became arahant so these two uh, groups were there in the buddha sasana some monks uh, followed the study path some monks followed the vipassana path meditation even today they are uh, the same monks uh, who are studying there are monks who are studying and there are some monks who are practicing meditation uh, those uh, these two groups are there even today another two groups of monks are there seeker and asaka seeker sanskrit saiks refers to a learner or trainee monk who is on the path to enlightenment but has not yet achieved full liberation arahantsi they are distinguished from asaka monks who are fully enlightened arahants and have completed their training seeker monks who are following the buddhism practicing the buddhism they are seeker uh, asaka means arahants they have completed the path nothing is there to practice they have already practiced hold the path so even today there are seekh monks uh, the monks who are following this buddhist order are called seekh sikkhati means learn uh, student monks sik sishya in sanskrit sishya so a student monks are they are they are called seeker asaka monks are arahants characteristics and practices seeker monks are characterized by their ongoing practice and training in the dhamma they focus on deepening their understanding and realization through practice such as sila samadhi panya morality concentration wisdom adhering to ethical conduct and the monastic code vinaya cultivating deep states of meditative absorption samadhi panya developing insight into the nature of reality particularly through practices like vipassana insight meditation in seka patipada sutta madhyama nikaya and maha gopalaka sutta madhyama nikaya these things are explained all the seven headed and yellow robed persons are not monks buddha said <laughs> because there are many uh, persons who have got seven head and yellow robed very good expression no namundake na samano अब तो अलिकम धनम इच्छा लोभ समापन्नो समनो किं भविष्यति नॉट बाय अ सेवन हेड डस अ मैन बिकम अ समन इफ ही लैक्स मोरालिटी एंड ओस्टिय प्रैक्टिस एंड टेल्स लाइज हाउ कुड ही हु इज फुल ऑफ covetousness and greed be a samana samana means monk so there are such kind of persons there are actors eh? film actors are they are they are uh, acting similar to the monks with uh, seven head and yellow robed so do you 
consider him as a real monk? No. They are actors. Yes, they are actors. Mm, uh, sometimes we can see some people are uh, wearing robes, yellow robes, and they have got seven head. So they are begging sometimes. They are moving on the roads. Uh, even in India, even in Sri Lanka, we have such kind of persons. Uh, while I was living there, one day I was uh, in a city. Uh, one monk came to a shop and he was asking money for the, uh, from the shop owner. Uh, he said, uh, I am having some uh, disease, I am taking medicine, so please support me. Uh, that uh, shop owner gave me a hint. This is bad person. Then I, I asked, from where you came? Where is your temple? May I have your identity card? He didn't give me his identity card. So, uh, he, the, at once he left from that place. He thought he is uh, in a bad position. I will inform to the police, then he will be uh, in uh, jail. Uh, that shop owner told me, every week he comes, every week he comes and collect money from the shops, saying like that. So I informed to the police station, there is a monk in this city now, collecting money in her own way, telling lies. They are not monks. A wearing a yellow robe with a seven head, they are doing those things. So we have to be careful. Uh, in India also, it is very common thing. So they are destroying the Buddhism. They are not following the Buddhism. Samana has overcome all evil. Yocha sameti papani Anuntulani sabbaso samitattahi papanam samanoti pavuchati. He who has totally subdued all evil, great and small, is called a samana because he has overcome all evil. The monks who are following the path to the liberation are also to be venerated, as explained here. So, the persons, the monks, are removing all the evils, attaining higher spirituality. So evil thoughts are coming into the mind, even to the monks. In Theragatha, there is a verse, Kama ragena daihami chittang me paridaihare Venerable Vangi, sir, went to the Buddha, and informed to the Buddha, Venerable Sir, I am affected by the lust, lustful thoughts. Kama Raga means lustful thoughts. I uh, have got some kinds of uh, lustful thoughts. I can't meditate. When he start to meditate, uh, he uh, think about the beautiful girls. He was thinking about uh, beautiful women. He informed the Buddha, Venerable Sir, I am remembering those things, what to do. Buddha said, you have to follow my advice. I will give you another object, topic to meditate. Buddha uh, gave uh, one very important object. It is thinking about the body. It is decaying. Uh, it is impermanent, producing suffering and no soul. And you have to practice vipassana meditation now. Think this body is decaying moment by moment. Uh, Buddha gave many examples. Then he practiced the meditation. After a few days he became arahant. Earlier he couldn't do it. So the monks are receiving those kinds of bad thoughts, evil thoughts, lustful thoughts, the thoughts related to the 
hatredness, angriness, and also the uh, thoughts related to the uh, self. Uh, it is mine, uh, it belongs to me like that. There are thoughts. So we have to practice more and more. The mind is always confused with those kinds of cravings. Cravings are there until attain arahanthood. So the lust will remain until the anagami position. Even the sotapatti person will have the lust, kamaraga. And sakadagami persons also have kamaraga, the lust. A little bit controlled in sakadagami position. In anagami position, third step will be, will not be there, Kamaraga. It will be vanished. In anagami position, the Kamaraga will be vanished. This is the nature. So monks also will have it. They are controlling it. They have controlled it. Key aspect to understand about Buddhist monks here, monastic life, vows, renunciation, roles, training, monastic orders. Buddhist monks live in monasteries or temples, often following a strict daily routine. That includes meditation, chanting and study of Buddhist scriptures. Vows. Monks take vows that vary, vary by tradition, but generally include abstaining from killing, stealing, lying, sexual conduct and intoxicants. They also adhere to rules governing their conduct and interactions. Renunciation. Monks renounce worldly attachments and possessions, focusing instead on spiritual growth and enlightenment, nirvana. So these are very important facts which are connected to the monks. The five great sins or five heinous, heinous crimes, they are called panchanantare kamma. In this, uh, these uh, five great sins, we can see the fifth one, creating a schism in the Sangha. Sangha Bhed, causing division or discord within the Buddhist monastic community is a bad, great thing. The lay people must be careful about this. There are some monks in temples, no? So we should not tell uh, bad things, wrong things, uh, which are damaging to each other. It is Cause for the Sangha Beda. Sangha Beda is very bad thing. That person will get birth in the hell after the death. See the other bad things, ma matricide, matu ghata, killing one's mother, it also very bad. Patricide, pitu ghata, killing one's father. Killing an arahant, arahant ghat, killing an enlightened being. Wounding a Buddha, lohitu padaka, causing injury to a Buddha, as uh, Devadatta did. It, because of uh, two great things, he entered to the avici hell. What are those? Wondering a Buddha, lohitu padaka, he did it. And Sangha Bed also he did. The last one, creating a Sikhism in the Sangha. Damage. Separated monks into two groups. It is bad thing. Therefore, lay people must be careful about these things. Respect. Buddhist monks are highly respected in their communities for their dedication to spiritual practice and their role in preserving and transmitting Buddhist teachings across generations. Their lifestyle exemplifies simplicity, mindfulness and compassion towards 
all beings. Always monks are thinking sabbe satta bhavantu sukitatta. Not only human beings, but also the other beings also must be there in peace. They never destroy beings. Do we need to respect them? Respecting Buddhist monks, like respecting any individual, is generally considered a positive and culturally appropriate behavior, especially in societies where Buddhism is prevalent. Here are some reasons why respecting Buddhist monks is often encouraged. Role in preserving tradition. Monks play a crucial role in preserving and passing on Buddhist teachings, rituals and practices from generation to generation. Respecting monks acknowledge their dedication to this important cultural and religious heritage. Commitment to spiritual life. Monks have chosen a life, life uh, life, uh, live, live, uh, live, uh, life of renunciation and spiritual pursuit, dedicating themselves to practices aimed and at cultivating wisdom, compassion and inner peace. Respecting monks recognizes their commitment and sacrifices in their pursuit. Community leaders. Monks often serve as spiritual leaders and advisors within their communities providing guidance, support, and teachings to both lay people and fellow monastics. So, we are thinking about these conditions to respect them. Cultural norms. In many Buddhist majority cultures, respecting monks is a deeply ingrained cultural norm. It reflects appreciation for the values and teachings they upload, uphold. Principle of reverence. Buddhism emphasizes the principle of showing reverence, respect towards those who embody spiritual qualities and contribute positively to society. Respecting monks aligns with this principle. You know, uh, some, pe uh, some monks are living in the forests. Some monks are living in the cities and villages. So people think forest monks are very peaceful. They have uh, got higher spirituality. The village monks, the monks who are living in the cities, they don't have uh, spirituality. They are living similar to the lay people. So how can we divide in this way? It is difficult. We can't peep into the mind. We can't enter to the mind of the monks. Some monks are living in the forest, but they are not uh, cultivating their spirituality. Though they are living in the forest or caves. So people have such kind of idea. They think forest monks are very good. They are having higher spirituality. We have to offer arms them, we should not offer arms to the village monks or so city monks. In this way, people are thinking. So, the place is not important. Some monks are there in villages, in the cities. They are having higher spirituality. Though they are living in AC rooms, though they are living in comfortable houses, Though they live in, um, uh, in some flats or similar to the mansions, uh, similar to the palaces. Even Buddha stayed in, in Jetavana Rama, you know, it is a flat. Uh, it is made by the uh, sandal wood, the kuti of the Buddha, room of the Buddha made by the sandal wood. Very valuable. But Buddha stayed there in Jetavana Rama and Purva Rama, many other, uh, many other monasteries were there, they are comfortable. Buddha said, the place is not valuable. The mind is the valuable thing. If the monks are living in temples, we can't consider they are 
not following Buddhism. Sometimes monks are there in the forest, they are not following Buddhism. They are not practicing. Just they are living in the caves and uh, living under the trees. They are not practicing. So, we have to be careful. Uh, the outlook is different. We have to peep inside. We have to associate them. Buddha said, uh, associate in one week, one month, two months, we can't recognize the real monk. <laughs> we can't recognize the real monk. We have to associate them for a long time. At that time also we can't recognize the real monk. Sometimes uh, there were monks who, has, uh, who became arahanthood. They were living with the other monks. Other monks didn't know he is arahant. And uh, sometimes they blame to him. Uh, sometimes he, they disturb to that monk. Sometimes Buddha said, don't disturb him. He is an arahant. Then they understood, oh, we have insulted him. We have blamed him. Difficult to recognize. So, as lay people, how you can recognize this monk is good, this monk is bad? You can't peep uh, into the mind. You can't enter to the mind. Sometimes, some monks are there, they don't look outside, just move, looking on the floor. They don't wear shoes, they don't touch money. Different ways. Then you, do you think he is a higher person uh, because of those activities? He is always uh, uh, go for the arms round, not uh, take a meal inside the temple. Just he move outside and under a tree or somewhere, sitting under, the, under a tree, he take uh, lunch. After seeing it, you think, oh, this monk is great. Other monks, no good. <laughs> we can't say like that, we can't imagine like that. We can't at once recognize the monks or other persons, even other persons. We can't recognize uh, seeing the outside behavior. So, respecting monks is not a blind audience, a blind obedience. It's important to note that respect for monks doesn't imply blind obedience or agreement with all aspects of their beliefs or practices. Respect can be shown through polite behavior, attentiveness when receiving teachings or guidance and following cultural norms related to interactions with monks, such as offering arms or support when appropriate. Ultimately, the level of respect shown to monks can vary based on cultural context, personal beliefs, and individual experiences. However, acknowledging and respecting their role in society and their commitment to spiritual principles is generally seen as a gesture of goodwill and cultural sensitivity. Eligible monks for the food offered by devotees. Who are the eligible monks for the food? Buddha said, Achara sanghata mattampi bhikkave mittang bhave tabbang rattam pindasa yogu bhavati. Achara sanghata mattampi. Monks, even if for the duration of a finger snap, metta, loving kindness, should be developed. One who develops it for the duration of a finger snap is eligible to have the food from devotees. So, all the monks are eligible for the food offered by you because they are practicing uh, loving kindness. No need to think more spirituality. Achara Sanghata Mattam is this way, we make sound, no? Finger snap. So if, if a monk meditate on loving-kindness, one second, he is uh, 
he is an eligible person for the offerings for the food offered by the devotees it is in metta sutta of odana and iti uttaka pali showing reverence in the vinaya pitaka the buddhist scriptures that contain the rules of conduct for monks there are guidelines for how monks should behave and how the lay people should show respect to monks this includes standing up to greet monks offering them a seat and showing attentiveness when they teach or offer guidance respect from lay people to monk in the vinaya pitaka there are a few facts i have taken from vinaya uh, books the vinaya pitaka lays out several guidelines and expectations regarding the behavior of monks and the ways lay people should show respect here are some key points offering requisites lay people are encouraged to support monks by offering the four requisites food robes shelter and medicine this support is a way of showing respect and ensuring that monks can focus on their spiritual practice without worrying about their basic needs so always you have to be careful about these things uh, you have to uh, offer these things to the monks uh, sometimes the monks doesn't have money they don't have uh, enough food they don't have enough robes so they don't have a resident place they uh, have to move here and there at that time devotees have to think uh, about those things they have to offer <coughs> when i was studying i didn't have enough money to do my study works devotees are not thinking about that so they think teacher will give money uh, the uh, teacher who are living in the temple will give money my teacher didn't give me money so uh, only two three families offered me money sometimes i didn't have money uh, travel by bus i at that time i didn't go to the university people think they monks have money they can study alone some little monks are having the same problem we have to think these monks are studying and they will protect buddhism we have to support them some monks don't have robes occasionally they will have robes we have to ask from them venerable sir do you have enough robes we have to offer them some monks have many robes so uh, if some uh, if we have many robes what we have to do we have to share it with others however i studied well then many people come and ask venerable sir what do you want after finishing my study there are many people at the time of learning no one supported <laughs> that is the reality uh, in the temples so monks are uh, studying with uh, lack of uh, facilities that is the thing behavior towards monks lay people should treat monks with respect which includes offering seats and accommodation lay people should offer monks a suitable place to sit and rest uh, the praise asana arhasa asanam databbam asana means seat when they ask a monk we have to offer our seat please come and take this seat when i was in sri lanka i went somewhere by bus before uh, get getting on the bus i i stood there few uh, minutes the shop owner in front of the bus stand uh, called me please come here bante uh, i don't have uh, white cloth 
I have only paper. I will uh, put it on the chair. Uh, please sit here. Then I took seat there. He offered a seat for me. Uh, according to that uh, moment, it is very useful. He observed a uh, merit doing it. Offering seat is a great meritorious action. Offering seats to the monks. And when we go to the Dhamma uh, talks in Sri Lanka, people uh, wash our feet before entering to the house. It is also a meritorious action. They are uh, respecting to the monks and they are respecting to the Buddha Dhamma. Dhamma. Uh, they decorate the uh, seat or chair very well, backside, various kinds of decorations. And the chair also well decorated. So it is a decoration for the Dhamma, for the Sangha, as a respect. They do those things. They lay down a cloth on the way when the monks are coming uh, into the chair, uh, coming for the Dhamma talks, they uh, lay down a cloth on the floor. After washing the feet, monks walk on that cloth and come to the chair and start to deliver Dhamma talk. Uh, all these things are meritorious. Meritorious. Uh, there is a place mentioned about the washing uh, uh, and cleaning the feet of the monks. Uh, they can get result. They will never get uh, any skin diseases in this birth cycle. Uh, there will not be any uh, hot uh, problems in the body. Thirsty will not be there in this birth cycle and uh, various kinds of um, um, results are there because of those kinds of meritorious activities. So, asana rahasa, asana bang, when there uh, is a monk, we have to offer the seat. Magga rahasa maggandata bang, if there is a monk who is coming uh, in front of us, we have to give the road. Uh, we have to clear the road uh, for his journey. Uh, once I went to Thailand, uh, when I was moving on a roadside, the uh, lay people uh, who are walking on that road, uh, roadside, they stood up and they stayed there with folded arms until I moved ahead. How much respect. They are also in a hurry uh, to uh, go somewhere. But they stop their walking and they, uh, with the folded arms, they worshipped. They stayed there until uh, the walk uh, finished that way. So, Magga uh, means the road. When there is a monk coming towards us, we should not go face to face. We should not go face to face. Then we have to give the road for the monks. Huh? That way we have to follow. It is given in Dakkina Vibhanga Sutta Majjima Nikaya. Here we saw some uh, give to one in need of food, what is requisite for food. Some give to one in need of a path, what is uh, requisite for a path. Using polite speech, addressing monks respectfully and listening attentively when they speak. So when we speak with the monks, we must be careful. You know, in Sri Lanka, they are so separate language to speak with monks. Not the normal words are using. Uh, for example, uh, coming, monks are coming, no? So, uh, in singular we say, enava. So, monks are not enava. Vadinava. Uh, pe lay people say, vadinava. Another verb is there for the monks. The same accent. Lay people, enava. 
monks vadinava two uh, verbs are there so there are many words which are very related to the monks so sleeping nidanava lay people la uh, nidanava monks are satapenava satapeno another verb is there for the monks this is very good uh, there are separate words separate words for the monks that much uh, respecting using palat speech when we speak with them we uh, have to speak with politeness peaceful and calm manner uh, we don't use harsh words uh, and also assisting with needs helping monks with their daily needs and showing deference to their position respectful conduct in the presence of monks lay people should observe proper conduct when in the presence of monks such as rising from their seats when monks approach bowing or offering a respectful gesture avoiding in an in an op- in appropriate behavior or speech so uh, mostly in buddhist countries myanmar thailand we can see when lay people talk with the monks they talk with the folded arms like this venerable sir and bowing down they respect much uh, when the monks are coming into some places they stand up they sit with the folded arms they stand with the folded arms saying sadhu so it is good for us it is good for lay people it's and it's meritorious action can earn merits respecting uh, to the monks can earn merits you are also uh, getting respectation in this birth cycle as a result of respecting to the monks if we don't do it you will not get respectation in the society in your birth cycle two ways benefit no for lay people showing respect to monks reference from vinay pitaka mahavagga kandaka one This section discusses the proper way of lay people to offer food and other requisites to monks. Mahavagga, evang hi vo bhikkave sikkitabbang. I don't read Pali uh, sentence, just see the translation uh, because we have very limited time. Thus monks, you should train yourselves. If any lay person comes and invites you for a meal, whether for the evening or day the day you should accept it if it fits within your arms bowl if a lay person comes to your dwelling and invites you for a meal you should accept it if it fits within your arms bowl so if there are uh, is a lack of food in your arms bowl you can accept it if it is full what to do still they are offering no so in thailand when we go to pindapatha charika people are offering offering many many things so lay person follow in the monk then uh, the extra food give uh, to him then can obtain more and more after having that much food the monk uh, reach to the temple and share with others share with others so it is a great uh, duty of the monks mahavagga kandaka 8 this section covers the offering of robes ekasa bikkuno ekan chivaram atrekam dattva databbam dvihiva tihiva chivarehi chivara sangvidhanam khatabbam for one monk an extra robe should be given two or three robes should be organized for the monks so uh, sometimes uh, they should have few robes uh, one robe will uh, wash 
the other one should be used no so uh, one rope will be damaged the other one is there other two uh, are there that they would uh, uh, allow uh, to the monks to have few robes chataso pachaya bikunam parikkara chevaram pindapato senasanam gilana pachayam the four requisites for monks are robes arm, arms food lodging and medicine so buddha recommended these uh, four requisites uh, for the monks uh, the lay people can offer them yathacha bikunam patisantaro hoti sarocha hoti kalyanocha as there is hospitality towards monks monks should be welcomed in a way that is meaningful and good uh, monks advise to the lay people to follow the buddhist path when they offer uh, these four requisites the it is a duty of monks to uh, guide uh, the lay people to attain uh, liberation uh, behavior towards monks mahavag khandaka eight this section provides guidelines on how lay people should behave respectfully towards monks this section includes instructions on the appropriate conduct of lay people in the presence of monks such as rising from their seats and offering respectful uh, gestures uh, you see some people are there in the society they don't respect to the monks uh when we go by a bus uh, when we get on to the bus uh, people don't give seeds sometimes they are lazy to give the seed in sri lanka there is a seat front seat is reserved for the monks but lay people are uh, uh, taking seat there and the monk is coming they don't give the seat then we say this seat belongs to us please stand up we we say them sometimes driver is shouting please give the seat to the monks it is reserved for the monks at that time they give there are that kind of people they are buddhist sometimes they are not respecting uh, to the monks uh, some people are uh, there they think uh, their own comfort that is why they sometimes they look uh, looking they are looking outside uh, they are seeing the trees and uh, shops outside of the road they don't care they see first the monk is getting on into the bus at that time he look out so they are looking outside the monk came here and he is standing uh, he is waiting the other person will uh, till offer a seat so it is no good uh the, those people will get bad results uh, in this birth cycle they will never get a seat to uh, sit that is the result I mean, in uh, important times uh, and uh, necessary times they will not get it depends on the uh, karma uh mahavag khandak respectful reception of monks patisantaram karisanti sabbehi te patisantaro patisantari tabbo they will show hospitality and all those acts of hospitality should be reciprocated when you meet monks you have to speak with them and you have to talk when the bus how are you uh, are you having any problems in this way you have to talk don't miss them Uh, don't avoid them uh, buddha said patisantara means talking each other so uh, when but brother lesly come to the temple he meets us and he talk venerable how are you like that so he is doing it so you also uh, should practice it uh, then we become friends we can uh, continue this connection furthermore offering of seeds and water asanam panyapet udakam aharat when a monk uh, reach to your house you have to prepare a seat first one is seat asanam asanam panyapet second one udakam aharat means offer water offer water offering water is a very great meritorious action uh it is very common uh, practice in thailand when someone moves to a house 
uh, uh, maybe a guest. So first thing is of offering water. They offer water, give water to the guests. So if they are uh, monks, the same thing is happening. Offering water, it is a meritorious action. We can earn merits. Because of that merit, we will not be get thirsty in this birth cycle. Uh, thinking about the meritorious uh, value, we have to offer. We have to offer water to the Buddha also. Early morning, you wash face and uh, then you uh, take a glass of water, offer to the Buddha and you can get meritorious uh, result with that action. You can think with the power of this merit, offering water is a powerful. May I have a healthy life and also in this birth cycle, may I have uh, water and food uh, in, even in a desert and all the difficulties may remove from my life. All the diseases of my family members may remove as soon as possible with the merit of this offering. This way we can improve uh, further. Then uh, rising from the seat, it is always mentioning in the uh, Buddhist literature. Teranam Anjalim Pagganhati, worship with the folded arms. Like worshiping with the folded arms. Uh, dana, generosity, is always practicing by our devotees. Listening to the Dhamma, it is also doing, avoiding distress, uh, disrespectful actions. The Buddha taught against disrespectful behavior towards monks, such as speaking harshly, criticizing them unjustly, or criti uh, creating obstacles to their practice, respectful speech and actions towards monks are considered conducive to spiritual growth for both lay people and monks. <clears throat> Mutual respect and support is very important. When lay people respect to the monks, the monks also should be respectful and grateful towards the uh, lay people. Uh, they have to uh, help. Monks in turn guide and teach lay people on the path to spiritual development and liberation uh, from suffering. We uh, have to give them uh, the Dhamma as the great uh, gift. That is the uh, great respect of monks towards the lay people. And monks should give Dhamma to the people. So, uh, when we are in the temples, people are expecting many things. <clears throat> so, uh, we give Dhamma, it is enough. Dhamma is enough. Eh? Even gods adore virtuous monks. Here are a few quotes from the Buddhist scripture, the Tripitaka, that emphasize the importance of respecting monks. Appala bhopi che bhikkhu salabhang nati manyati tangve deva pasang santi suddha jivim atanditam. Even if a monk gains a little, he should not despise his gain. Even gods will praise the one, that one who leads a pure life and is diligent. In Dhammapada, uh, we can see this verse. Uh, even the gods uh, pay respect to the monks who are practicing spirituality. Sigalo Vada Sutta, uh, if uh, in five ways should a householder, householder treat to samanas and brahmanas, it means monks and brahmins, by lovable deeds, by lovable words, by lovable thoughts, by keeping open house to them, by supplying their material needs. Panchahiko gahapati putta thanehi kulaputtena uparima disa samana brahmana pachupatha tabba. So, uh, to Singhala, uh, Buddha expressed these things. 
uh, how to respect to the monks dig janu sutta there are a uh, few facts related to the uh, respectation of the monks the last one uh, red colored one you see among those eight facts uh, looking after monks the lay people as a lay person must look after monks they have to treat them well then they can live uh, furthermore they can uh, practice buddhism they can protect buddhism if the lay people don't treat them well they will not live furthermore they will give up uh, they will disturb uh, they uh, are not having enough uh, facilities to live agga pasada sutta in anguttara nikaya uh, in this sutta you see this sutta discusses four ways in which lay people should so respect and honor to monks rising from their seat and greeting monks attending to monks with respect attention and hospitality providing monks with robes arms food dwelling places and medicine listening to the dhamma teaching attentively when monks are teaching agga pasada sutta it means you see many places uh, in buddhist literature in tipitaka uh, which are connected to the respect of the uh, monks uh, but made by the lay people the four kinds of faith uh, produces higher results if we respect to the buddha dhamma and sangha you will get uh, very good results in this birth cycle uh, it is mentioned uh, here ye bikave buddhe pasanna agge te pasanna agge kopana pasanna nam aggo vipako hoti aggo vipako means great result will earn respecting to the buddha first one is buddha second one attangiko maggo tesang aggama khayati if we uh, respectfully follow the noble eightfold path it is also a great meritorious action uh, we will get good results Uh, that uh, result is uh, higher than other meritorious activities then dhamma sankata va asankata va virago tesang aggama khayati it is the dhamma if we respect to the dhamma it is producing higher results so uh, it is higher than the other meritorious activities faith on sangha tathagata savaka sango tesang aggamak khayati uh, those who have confidence in the sangha have confidence in the foremost and for those who have confidence in the foremost the result is foremost if we respect to the maha sangha uh, it is producing a higher result aggamak khayati aggam vipakam labati he will get higher results this is uh, taught by the buddha in this agga pasada sutta yeke chi buddham saranam gata se nate gami santi apayam he apaye bhumi pahaye manu sandeham devakayam paripure santi whoever has taken refuge in the sangha will not go to the reams of misery having left behind the human body they will be reborn into the body of a deva a celestial being so if you respect to the monks not only monks there are three verses in uh, connection ekechi buddhan saranam gatase ekechi dhammam saranam gatase ekechi sangham saranam gatase if one respect to the buddha o dhamma o sangha they will get birth in the heaven after the death 
Nathe gamisanti apayam, they will not reach to the hell. Nathe gamisanti apayam, pahaya manusan they after the death, they will reach to heaven. So it's producing higher result. Good results of respecting monks. It is mentioned here, Sang Yutta Nikaya, O Lord of Gods. It is taught by the Buddha to the gods, you know, Lords of Gods means Sakka, Sakka, Lords of God, Sakka. Buddha preached this Dhamma to him. It is better to respect to the monks and take refuge of monks. It may support to you to get birth in heaven again. It will produce ten higher results than other gods. They are lone life, divine color, divine comfort, divine fame, divine lordship, divine form, divine sound, divine good smell, divine taste, and divine touch. These are uh, even uh, in the heaven, we can see these uh, comfortable things. So, as a result of respecting to the Sangha and also Dhamma and Buddha, one can get these kinds of comfortable things uh, in the heaven. And also, if they get birth in the human world, they are also gaining these ten kinds of results. Lone life, divine color, we are having very beautiful color uh, of our body because of the respectation to others and also comfort, fame, lordship, form, sound. Uh, we are always hearing good sounds. Uh, sometimes we hear bad sounds, no? So as a result of uh, respecting to the triple gems, we never hear bad sounds. So divine taste, uh, divine smell, so we, we, we will get very comfortable things in this uh, life. Okay, I think it's enough for today. There are many, many things to discuss. Uh, there are many teachings of the Buddha. So uh, according to these facts, we have to respect to the monks. Thinking about this Buddha Sasana, Buddhist order, if you don't respect them, they will destroy. They will uh, go home back. No use of staying here. They have sacrificed their life. They have dedicated their life. We have to respect for, uh, for that. So though they don't have very higher spirituality, uh, we, we have to think about this fact. It is enough. They are uh, protecting this Buddhist order, wearing this yellow robe and with the seven headed, they are living with various kinds of difficulties. That is why we have to respect them, we have to worship them. Okay, enough for today. Uh, now it is time to uh, ask questions. If you have any questions, you can ask. Uh, with the a merit of listening Dhamma talks, you may reach to the final goal. So when, when we discuss the Dhamma, it is also producing merits. Let's have a discussion a uh, few minutes. Uh, one question there may be with you. There may be very bad monk in a temple. No uh, uh, observing precepts. Sometimes taking alcohol. Sometimes taking drugs, and no talking peacefully, uh, don't meditate, just only eating and sleeping. What to do, Bhante? You will ask, no? <laughs> what we have to do? Uh, one thing we can do, we can avoid him. Because of him, we should not go down. We should not get angry. And there is a path to clear this Buddhist order. We can inform to the, the other monks, there is a monk, please uh, uh, work on him. As lay people, you should not blame him, you should not punish him, because you will get bad results. You 
should hand over it to the proper person. If he is doing very um, more and more bad things, just you can complain to the police. <laughs> he is doing bad things. It is no good. Uh, you should not involve uh, to the bad activity uh, towards them. You, you should not do bad things towards them. That is the way. Okay. Bhante, this is uh, just an observation. <coughs> just now you mentioned about um, urban monks, monks who live in towns and villages, and monks who live in the forest and caves. Um, of course, the general perception is a monk, as you mentioned, who lives in the forest and or in the caves, uh, seem to be seem to be uh, practicing better than the monks who are exposed to material things in the urban environment. So that is why I think most lay people have uh, more confidence or sadda in forest monks as opposed to urban monks. Of course, the urban monks also play an important role as in providing counselling and teaching, as you said. Uh, but the general perception is, it's not a question, it's just an observation, right? Uh, so, we have an affinity to somebody who's trying to find the quickest way out of samsara, as opposed to one who is indulging in you know, material wealth and being exposed to the modern world especially. So sometimes you cannot blame uh, the lay person for b thinking such. So yes. just an observation, I think, yeah. Yes, actually, I was had uh, the same idea. I was thinking the forest monks are very uh, spiritual than, lay, than uh, the monks who are living in villages and cities. So, I went to the forest and I stayed and I meditated in the forest uh, for few days, few weeks. Uh, in, the, in that forest, there were some monks, they, they are not meditating. They are going for the arms round and they come back. Just, uh, they also had mobile phones. They uh, were playing games. They were seen uh, looking. They were seen various kinds of things which are in uh, social media. Never meditating. So I was thinking, oh, I thought they are meditating here, but they are not doing it. Uh, I am meditating, but they are not meditating. So uh, in this way, actually, we uh, I think nowadays it is happening like that. Early period, I think it was very well. Now the technical equipments are there, laptops and mobile phones. They are addicted to these things. Even forest monks <laughs> are addicted to these things. So there are some monks who are practicing very well. Uh, there are some monks I have met, uh, forest monks. Uh, some monks are living in the forest more than 40 years. They are meditating, they uh, can see uh, other uh, persons very well. They can read the minds of other people. They can give forecasts. Uh, they see the future uh, with the developed mind. So there are uh, the, uh, both kinds of persons are there in villages, in the cities and in the forest. Uh, this is the nature, even in the period of Buddha, you know, there are many bad monks. Uh, as you have heard, Chan, Sudin, uh, Devadatta, Buddha advised them, but they didn't care even Buddha. They worked on their own way. Whatever Buddha said, they do against to the Buddha. Uh, they were breaking rules always. Uh, the Channa and, uh, and Sudin, uh, these two monks are always breaking rules. Then Buddha had to give new, new rules. That is why Pati Mukha Vinaya Pitaka was started. Those monks always try to break. Once Buddha said, you should not associate with women, you should not enjoy with women. They, then the Sudin uh, started to enjoy with animals. 
<laughs> started to uh, do sexual activities with animals. Sudin. Then Buddha said, it, that one was so wrong. <laughs> you should not do it. <laughs> so, these were happening even in the period of Buddha. So, now also, it is very difficult to control. All our human beings have got lots of feelings. Yeah, however, we are trying to protect this Buddhism as much as possible, uh, uh, saying and advising, uh, teaching them, please protect this Buddhist order. It is a great doctrine. Bhante, uh, relating to these questions, now, like you say, you know, shaving the head and wearing the rope doesn't necessarily you are a virtuous monk. Now, the problem is that it's the definition of monks. You know, uh, as lay people, how do we know which are supposed to be respected and what is, uh, which one are not supposed to be respected? Like you, uh, okay, related to about uh, the urban monk and the forest monk, I believe we always call the urban monks the social monks. I mean, they deal with the society. Probably we need both because the urban monk need to cater for the lay people. Mm. Whereas the forest monk, you are at the eye level, you stay there, you only for your own salvation. Mm. You are not uh, for the salvation of, mm. if you interpret it that way. Mm. So, the perception may not be correct because you got different functions. Mm. Okay. Now, my next question, the other question is, uh, just now you are talking about two kinds of monk. One is a scholarly monk, the other one who actually goes for liberation. Okay. So, is it they are on a different stage? Uh, will the scholarly monk later will come to the 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 other the other the, the second level, or is it uh, similarly to urban and forest monk? Is it the scholar monks are less uh, spiritual advanced than the those to, to liberation? Okay. So, uh, the uh, Ganta Dura and Vipassana Dura, we have to understand uh, the uh, study uh, can be done from the beginning uh, and also the Vipassana can be done from the beginning as a monk. So, there is no age limit. So, uh, mostly the uh, forest monks are not studying. They don't go monastery schools or universities. They practice vipassana meditation. Uh, it is their wish. If they uh, want to do study works, they come out. They reach to the uh, urban or village temples and they continue. So, anyone can do studies, there is no problem. And uh, the vipassana meditation, vipassana dura can be observed uh, even uh, sitting in a village temple, uh, sitting in a ur urban place. So, it is his duty to do it. So, both can do uh, uh, together. I am studying and I am practicing meditation, vipassana. Both can do. So, it's, it is depending on the preference, uh, according to the monks. Actually, spirituality, uh, spirituality is great. So, we can uh, follow it because our uh, ambition to reach to the liberation, final goal, when we uh, or get ordination, we recite a verse, Sabha Dukkha Nisarana uh, Nittaranathaya, uh, to remove all the sufferings, uh, Nibbanathaya, to attain final goal, I get this ordination, Sabha Dukkha Nisaranathaya. So, as a monk, uh, we must uh, practice spiritual path, the study also necessary. Uh, we uh, have to learn, we have to read uh, Tipitaka 
we uh, have to know pali to uh, understand uh, the uh, exact meaning of the teaching without knowing pali we can't learn the the exact meaning of the teaching of the buddha you know some words have got many meanings you take sankhara this word has has got four meanings the word sankhara has got many meanings so if we don't know pali we are uh, misunderstood uh, we don't know the real meaning so this way uh, the both way can follow uh, especially the spiritual path is highly emphasized by the buddha okay we are talking about a uh, monk yeah. definition of monk yeah these days there's a lot of non virtuous or we call it a bogus monk mm. so now as lay people is it that to be on the safe side we respect everyone because we are not sure whether they are virtuous or not is that is that should that be the 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 attitude of a lay people mm. okay uh before uh thinking about the monks we have to think about one self am i virtuous as lay people you should think am i observing even five precepts uh mostly breaking no uh breaking uh five precepts sometimes drink sometimes telling lies and uh, sometimes uh, doing sexual misconduct and uh, killing beings even mosquitoes you are killing no so how you can criticize the monks you are not observing precepts so how can you criticize the monks as uh, that kind of person you have to think about that so the monks are there uh, if they do bad things wrong things they will earn bad results let it be there with them as lay people we do uh, offerings and all those things thinking about the buddhist order so uh, if we think about their virtue what will happen to us so our mind will be polluted so we should be careful just we do our duty you uh, do your duties towards your children sometimes they will not treat you after uh, getting old so it is their duty we have done our service our duty so if they don't do their duty nothing to do they, it will be there with them in the same way we have to do our duty towards the monks then we can be satisfied we can get good results i think it's enough okay go on mm. you see in malaysia we have a lot of night markets mm. then we have monks mm. those actually at the night market at night okay mm. asking for money and all this we know they are bogus monks mm. so as lay people can we tell them off or just walk away and forget because mm. if we don't do anything I mean is bad for buddhism mm. because we know they are not supposed to be there there are now a lot of them so as lay people what do we do tell them off mm. or just walk away uh. so as i mentioned uh, even in sri lanka it's happening there are some persons who are collecting money using the robe so uh, they are doing wrong things so at that time we can do uh, as i mentioned earlier we have to inform to the relevant persons uh, relevant places uh, thinking about the buddhist order uh, you know there was a woman in uh, one of the cities in sri lanka she is wearing a bag which is uh, used by a monk and she is having a bowl uh, and she was uh, going on the road collecting money i saw her i reached to her i said you should not do this this bowl is very meritorious one it is belong to the monks why 
you use it as a lay, layman, why you use it to collect money? She is using bowl, uh, which are used by the monks, and she is uh, having a bag, which are used by the monks. So they are using the Buddhist uh, symbols, and they are destroying the Buddhism. When the people see it, so they will criticize, they will uh, fed up with Buddhism. Some uh, people are there working like that. So we have to advise them. Then at that time also I informed to the police, there is a woman who is wandering in this city collecting money using a bowl. It is dangerous. Uh, it is very sinful activity. She doesn't, I told her, this is very bad sinful activity. Don't use this bowl. This is belong to the monks, Buddhist order. Don't misuse it. I informed her. So uh, I didn't know what happened to her. I informed to the relevant place. So in the same way, we have to work. Huh? As a monk. So. Uh, just you can reach to them and ask which, uh, which section are you uh, connecting. Then we uh, can inform to the uh, higher places, know that kind of places. Uh. Uh. No, no, we, 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 uh, we can't uh, treat them, we can avoid them without getting angry and just we can advise them, please don't do this, it is harmful to the Buddhist order and also if there is any way to uh, block him, we have to block, block him. Now it is time to uh, discuss, uh, stop the discussion, so we will wind up this Dhamma talk. Uh, we transfer merits to the gods, we have invited to the go gods uh, in the beginning, say in Samantha Chakkavalesu, that is the invitation. So we transfer merits saying, Akasatha Chabhummatha Deva Naga Mahiddika Punyantang Anumoditva Chirang Rakhantu Loka Sasanang Se Sadhu three times. This uh, merit uh, reached to all the persons who joined to this Dharma talk. Uh, we uh, transfer merits to all the people who uh, has uh, built uh, this kind of place. Uh, the late Chief Venerable Dhamma Ananda Thera and the devotees who have supported to this Buddhist Mahavihara may take this merit and also uh, the relatives who are connected to your life, this life and previous lives, may partake this merit. May they be happy, comfortable and peaceful life. They are maybe with all those relatives. May they attain final goal uh, as soon as possible. And also you may have a good life from today with the power of this merit all the obstacles, difficulties may remove from your life and all the good ambitions may be very fruitful and successful in this life and also may you have good births in this birth cycle without having any difficulties and suffering. May you attain final goal as soon as possible with the support of this merit. Thinking in this way, say sadhu three times. Blessings Abhivadana Silis Nichang Vadha Pachaino Chattaro Dhamma Vadanti Ayuvano Sukhang Balang Ayuraro Gesampati Sagga Sampati Mevacha Ato Nibana Sampati Iminate Samijatu Sadu 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 Thank you, Bhante. Uh, I think this uh, very enlightening Dhamma sharing by Bhante uh, this evening.
So I guess we now know a little bit, as lay people, how we should be paying respects and why we should be paying respects to members of the Mahasangha and uh, also reciprocally how they will uh, be able to uh, respect us in, by their duties that they have to perform. Um, so as Bhante mentioned, it's not about the person who's wearing the yellow robe or who's, who's shaven, uh, who needs respecting, but you know, we have to look beyond that and to be able to also associate with them and have a relationship with them before we make an assessment of the person, right? So I think those are little nuggets that we have to take back this evening. Uh, this coming Sunday, which is two days away, Bhante will be talking on another very interesting subject that's called uh, the Buddha's advice on diet. Okay. Diet. Ah. So people like me <laughs> need to attend. <laughs> yeah, please come for that also. <laughs> yeah. So this Sunday at 10 a.m., uh, Buddha's advice on diet. Okay. So um, and as I mentioned earlier, Bante will be here for till the 20th of uh, August, and then he has to leave. But he will do uh, conduct a retreat, a meditation retreat uh, on mindfulness on the 17th and 18th of August. Uh, the posters will be out Seven. and the registration forms. So within the next couple of days, you can go on our Facebook pages or even our WhatsApp, if you're in the WhatsApp groups, please register for the uh, retreat. So with that, thank you, Bhante, well, once thank again. Thank you, thank you very and much. And wish you okay. all the best. And okay. say sadhu, 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 sadhu.